Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. Today, we're going to be diving into 5 interesting facts about my boy, the battle-hardened Mandalorian, Din Djarin. Din is a character whose story I just can't get enough of, and, like many Star Wars fans, he's quickly become a favorite character for me. So, let's discuss 5 interesting facts about the badass Mandalorian, Din Djarin. Spoilers ahead for Season 2 of The Mandalorian, so turn back now if you don't want anything spoiled. Number 1. Din was a member of a cult. During the Chapter 11 episode of The Mandalorian, titled The Heiress, our pro protagonist, Din Djarin, crossed paths with several other Mandalorians, most notably Bo-Katan Kryze. During their meeting, Bo-Katan and the other Mandalorians with her removed their helmets to Din's shock and consternation. This led to Bo-Katan explaining that Din was a child of the Watch. She explained to Din that the children of the Watch were a Mandalorian cult of religious zealots that followed the way of the Mandalore, which was their religious doctrine that mandated protecting fellow Mandalorians, wearing their helmet at all times, and acting as both hunter and prey. If a child of the Watch removed their helmet in front of another living being, whether it be by force or willingly, they were no longer permitted to wear it. Furthermore, Mandalorians who adhere to the way of the Mandalore would state this is the way when following its ideals. Children of the Watch also adopted orphans or abandoned children of various species as foundlings who were then raised and trained in the way and the Mandalorian form of combat. At the end of Season 1 of The Mandalorian, our little homie Grogu was deemed a foundling and Din was entrusted with ensuring his protection and care. Additionally, children of the Watch such as Din would be trained in the Fighting Corps, which was a subgroup of the cult. The covert of Mandalorians that Din interacted with on Navarro in Season 1 followed the ways of the Children of the Watch cult. This covert, also known as the Tribe, was led by their matriarch, the Armorer, who would instill the various ways and mandates that the Children of the Watch had to adhere to. Although it hasn't been officially stated in canon, many Star Wars fans believe that the Children of the Watch were born from Death Watch, which was a Mandalorian terrorist group during the days of the Clone Wars, which Bo-Katan was actually a member of at one point. Most likely, the Children of the Watch probably began following the events of the Great Purge, which was an event where the Empire killed most of the Mandalorian people and took a large amount of their Beskar. If they did in fact stem from Death Watch, they appear to have adopted beliefs that are potentially more hard-lined and radical than their predecessors. Number 2. Din's Clan Was Clan Mudhorn in Mandalorian culture, families were referred to as clans, and each clan worked under a particular house or political faction. For example, our homegirl Sabine Wren from Star Wars Rebels was a member of Clan Wren, who were allied with the notable House Vizsla. At the conclusion of Season 1 of The Mandalorian, when the armorer was shown our little man Grogu, Din explained that the child was responsible for saving him from the Mudhorn, who attacked him on Arvala 7, and that he had protected Grogu from harm since then. Din was then tasked by the armorer with taking care of Grogu in accordance with a creed, and that the child was to be reunited with its kin. The armorer also informed Din that his signet had been revealed as a mudhorn, thus declaring the creation of his clan, which now consisted of Din and our homeboy Grogu. Following the conclusion of Season 2 of The Mandalorian, Luke Skywalker came to Grogu's call and took the youngling to train him to hone and bolster his skills in the Force. Although he and Din will now be going their separate ways, at least for a little while, I imagine Grogu will forever be a part of Clan Mudhorn. Number 3. Din's sniper rifle appeared long before The Mandalorian aired. In the current canon, Din's sniper rifle, which is an Amban phase pulse blaster, first appeared with our homeboy Din's first appearance in Chapter 1 of The Mandalorian on November 12, 2019. However, the Amban phase pulse blaster's design can actually be traced back to the much maligned 1978 Star Wars Holiday Special. In the animated segment of the special, which is actually the first Star Wars television property and the first appearance of Boba Fett and Mandalorian armor, our homie Boba Fett can be seen rocking an Amban phase pulse blaster. Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau sought to pay homage to the holiday special by outfitting Din with the badass sniper rifle and having him encounter a similar situation as Boba Fett did in the holiday special. In Chapter 1, Din used his Amban phase pulse blaster to ward off a Ravenac attempting to devour the Razor Crest, much like Boba Fett did in the holiday special when he used his Amban phase pulse blaster to ward off a Pana Dragon. During Chapter 14, it appears Din's sniper rifle was destroyed after Moff Gideon's Class 546 cruiser destroyed the Razor Crest and everything within the ship, which is where Din's Amban phase pulse blaster was left. Let's hope our boy gets himself a new one. Number 4. Speaking of the Razor Crest, the ship was pretty badass. It's unknown when Din actually came into ownership of the Razor Crest, but once it came into his possession, Homeboy lived and worked from it as he hunted bounties in the Outer Rim territories in the early days of the New Republic. The Razor Crest was initially 
built as a gunship military craft at some point before the formation of the Galactic Empire, and in 19 BBY, it was used to patrol local territories. The crest had two laser cannons, two engines, and a hyperdrive. It could be piloted by one individual and had room for two others. It also contained an astromech interface socket. However, due to Din's distrust of droids, it remained unused. Din had a variety of equipment in the crest cargo hold, including a vac tube, a weapons locker that stored a multitude of weapons and blasters, and a carbonite freezing chamber Din used to carbon freeze his bounties. As previously mentioned, Moff Gideon destroyed the Razor Crest when Din and Grogu traveled to Tython to reach out to a Jedi. Number 5. Technically, Din could now be viewed as a potential leader of the Mandalorian people. During Chapter 16 of The Mandalorian, Din rescued our little homie Grogu and wound up dueling Moff Gideon, who possessed the Darksaber, in the process. After defeating Gideon and taking the Darksaber from him, Din offered the ancient lightsaber to Bo-Katan, who refused to take it from him. According to Mandalorian custom, one could only obtain the Darksaber by defeating the previous owner in combat. Should they have claimed it any other way, their claim to the saber would be considered illegitimate, which is why Bo-Katan refused to accept it from Din. In Mandalorian culture, the Darksaber was respected as a symbol for the leadership of House Vizsla and later on Death Watch. In Season 4 of Rebels, because of its status within Mandalorian culture, Bo-Katan was given the Darksaber by Sabine Wren in an attempt to unify Mandalore and defeat the Imperial occupation of the planet. Now that Din possesses the Darksaber, coupled with his battles and victories over the Empire, other Mandalorians may view him as their Mandalore, which is the title assumed by the sole leader of the Mandalorian people. Season 3 of The Mandalorian could see Mandalorian Mandalorians flocking to Din's side, helping to unify his people, which could be essential in their fight to regain Mandalore. And there you have it. Those are five interesting facts about one of the most baller characters in Star Wars, Din Djarin. Din's story continues to be intriguing, exciting, and just all around fun. He's become an amazing character during these last two seasons of The Mandalorian, and I can't wait to see where his story will go next. But what do you guys think about some of the facts we've discussed? What are some of your favorite Din Djarin facts or moments? Let us know down in the comments. If you like this video, please help out the channel by hitting that like button and making sure you subscribe. Follow the channel on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at Dans on Fandoms. Thanks for watching and stay nerdy.